Hi guys, welcome back to another episode of Marvel Man 901. So today I'm going to do a uh, Spider-Man Friday special, which features Amazing Spider-Man and yet another is issue of Amazing Spider-Man, Shroud, Aquaman, and lastly, Aaron. So I'm going to start off with Amazing Spider-Man issue 23 from 1965. This features a Green Goblin who basically plans to take over the gangs of New York, basically all the underworld. So he's trying to trick, uh, basically make a Lucky Lobo, who is leader of a certain gang, to be arrested so that he can take over the gang. He does, however, manage to trick Spider-Man into fighting this gang. However, it kind of goes go sideways as Spider-Man takes out, out the entire gang, basically foiling Green Goblin's plans without even knowing it. Uh, later on, Spider-Man finds Green Goblin and they fight, having a big, big fight and... Green Goblin escapes. So moving on now with Amazing Spider-Man 390. This is the first part of Shrieking. So basically Spider-Man is still trying to pros process the whole Green Goblin relation that he had um, even after Green Goblin or Harry Osborn had been killed or died. Uh, basically about the whole pursuit thing where Green Goblin worked together with Chameleon to create these uh, horrible uh, fake parents kind of turning his life upside down so he's uh, a little bit upset about this naturally anyway moving on to Ravencroft where basically an asylum uh, for the empowered people basically the leader there is Kafka who and she's trying to make heads or tails about the re re rehabilitation of Malcolm McBride who is the carrion uh, so she basically brings Malcolm over to Shriek's uh, cell, basically tries to show him that he's not the only one who has problems here and he can he can make it a lot easier than this character. However, Shriek realizes, well she recognizes that Malcolm McBride is actually Carrion, who in uh, the recent event called uh, Maximum Carnage, she was basically his mother in a way this whole sick thing that she and Carnage had with the other team members, whatever. Uh, so she busts out, she gains some extra powers from this and basically busts out, grabs McBride and then breaks out of Ravencroft. So the next issue I'm going to talk about is Shroud 4. So this is basically the last part of the limited series from 1994. So uh, Shroud fights Kali, who we actually can't see or even notice where she is in any way because even though he has these daredevil like abilities he can't hear or smell her or anything like that she's basically just invisible to him and eventually he manages to realize that Kelly is actually Dalindra who is basically his stepsister in a way from way back when he was in the cult of Kali <coughs> anyway uh, they manage to break off when a police officer arrives and um, uh, Shroud tries to basically just uh, bring himself back in order to fight them once again. Uh, while this is happening, Lassiter, who is, uh, who is employer of Shroud and Kali, basically just um, tries to make King, this other gang guy, to get his uh, money that he owes Lassiter. Um, while this happens, of course, uh, Shroud goes to the castle that is the headquarters of the Cult of Kali to talk to Balinor, his old mentor and who is uh, actually the father of Dalindra. So basically, Balinor explains that Yanrof, who is the leader of the Cult of Kali, led Dalindra into this dark path and making her into this ultimate assassin called Kali. Uh, and uh, that is why, in fact, Balinor has sent Shroud off in the first place, way back in his origins. Uh, sent him away from the Cult of Kali, basically to protect him from becoming evil. Uh, however, there is a bit of a destiny for, Shra for Shroud. That he is to kill Kali and to bring down Janrof and the whole Cult of Kali thing. Uh, anyway, he comes back to his headquarters yet again to... Um, basically reassess himself for the last fight and the cat who is basically an associate of shroud uses an old spider -Man, spider tracer that he had to call spider-man for help so when the final showdown happens at the castle for the cult of kali uh, shroud fights both scorpion and kali which is very difficult just fighting one of them 
Uh, Spider-Man, however, comes along and takes the fight against Scorpion alone while Shroud fights Kali. It all ends with King being killed by his uh, CIA wife, uh, Scorpion being defeated by Spider-Man and Lassiter being defeated as well, and Kali escapes from getting beaten by Shroud. So that ends that limited series. Moving on now with a DC comic, actually. This is Aquaman 20 from 1965. So this features a two-headed monster who kidnaps an Atlantean. And Aquaman and Aqualad has to go and rescue this guy. And after they do that, they meet Kaltor, who is apparently an old friend and teacher of Aquaman. Very old, very trusted. Uh, Kaltor basically makes uh, Aquaman take an oath in front of the Atlantean High Council to kill this monster once and for all. So they go off to find it. Meanwhile, Mira basically trails along, trails along behind, kind of out of jealousy in a, thing, in a way, and uh, the two-headed monster kidnaps her. So uh, eventually Aquaman, Aqualad and Kaltor, uh, well, Aquaman and Aqualad, sorry, they find the monster, fights him, and uh, basically lasso him to enable to keep track on him. On him. Uh, the monster tries to escape, and those two actually find Kaltor being snared with the same snares that the monster had, and kind of it all clicks. Kaltor was the monster, and he basically begged Aquaman to kill him because he couldn't continue living like that. So Aquaman, after Kaltor became the monster once again, there's a big fight between Aquaman and Aqualad, and the monster of course, uh, and Aquaman had to kill the monster. He was forced to do it. However, this kind of freed Kaltor from this curse, and he basically was alive and well again not being a monster at all. Uh, so it's a nice ending to that story. I'm gonna move on now with the last part for that day, which is that day's character, Aaron, the Rogue Watcher. So the Watchers are, of course, a very ancient civilization or ancient uh, alien race who were sworn not to interfere with other people, other races, basically as to observe things that happen in the universe. However, Aaron is uh, he's introduced in Captain Marvel issue uh, volume 1 issue 39 as basically as uh, a witness to the trial of Watu who was actually his uncle. Uh, however, Aqu uh, Aaron basically he didn't like the whole vow thing that they won't uh, interfere with anything so he basically goes rogue. He becomes a supervillain as he is introduced in Fantastic Four 321. And later on, he will continue to be this very, very manipulative, very behind the scenes, very dangerous villain of the Fantastic Four. So that is all for today. Thank you all for watching. Do subscribe if you like this. All of this is, of course, Marvels and the creative team's creations. I'm basically just telling the story. Uh, so stay safe and uh, have a good day.